Hello, hello everyone, Tashina Gonzalez, your favorite holistic wellness coach. And I am here with a special live because I am actually here doing part two with one of my new friends. So I am gonna wait for her to join me today. Hopefully everyone saw on my page, we are gonna be talking about natural support and options living with uterine fibroids. So we did part one talking about our stories previously. And now me and, and my friend, Latoya Dwight of the Fibroid Pandemic are going to share with you guys what we do to make ourselves more comfortable and some natural support that we have found in order to survive what we're going through and even thrive. So I'm gonna keep on here. As you come on here as usual, give me a hi, a hello, a wave. Let me know what city or state you are watching from. And if you're watching it, no matter what venue, here on Instagram or later on YouTube, then make sure that you hashtag replay so that we can say hi to you and make sure that you're here. One other thing that we did that was great, wonderful and amazing and helpful was if you can use the question button, it pops it up for us and makes it a little bit easier for us to respond. That way we don't miss your questions in the chat. Hey Margo, thanks for joining. Still waiting for my guest to join me so that I can add her on and then we will start our topic that we are talking about today, which is natural support and options living with fi uterine fibroids. So, Margo, can you tell us where you are watching us from? Gotta just pull up my notes a little bit. Alrighty, alrighty. Waiting for a couple more people to join as well as, let me see if I hit this. And I can, yeah, I think I can. Here we go. Hi, Victor. I'm doing my Feel Good Friday today, but it's a girl's topic, just to let you know. <laughs> it's not always the case. But today we are chatting on something that relates to women specifically. <laughs> but I am waiting for my guest to pop on here with me. Hello, hello. Thanks for joining me. Feel free to let me know where you are watching me from in the chat. Hi, Jordan. Thanks for joining me. So feel free to let me know what city, state, or country you are watching me from in the chat. And if you have any questions, then be sure to hit the question. There you are. Hello. How's it going? Good, good, good. good. Thank okay. you, Jordan. Just trying to adjust my lighting here. My lighting's not that great. <laughs> yeah, I'm having the same. I'm like, I need, need to go buy some more light bulbs is what I need to do. <laughs> <laughs> Happy Friday. Happy Friday. Thank you. Just bear with me for one moment, trying to adjust nope. the fan so I don't have to hold my phone in my hand. No problem. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for joining. Feel free to drop in the chat what city, state, or country you are joining us from. Yes, we love to know. <laughs> All right, let's see. I think that's okay. Can you see me okay? I can. Yeah. All right. Well, happy Friday, dear. So good to see happy you. Happy Friday. Good to see you too. How was your week? It was good. It was very, very good, actually. Uh -huh. Busy, just like you, but very, very good. <laughs> yeah, mine was productive. I got a lot of key things done. But other yep. than that, you know, um, I take it for what it's worth. Some things didn't get done, but all the main major items were able to get, um, were able to be completed. So I'm excited about that. Good, good, good. Alrighty, so I did introduce you to my audience, but if you want to introduce yourself, what you do, <laughs> as well as you got a bunch of letters behind your name. What do all those letters stand for? <laughs> yeah, so you know, I think you're the second person who asked me that question, Tashina. So first, before I even get started, I just want to tell you, thank you so much for having me here as a guest. You know, I don't take it lightly. I know that you have several things you're working on. You're a busy woman. So I definitely do appreciate you for allowing me the opportunity to come in 
speaking your platform, but more so for, to allow me to reach more women as well. Um, so yeah, um, I'm trying to think of which letters. BBA, I have a bachelor's degree in business administration. The MSM is a master's degree in um, master's of, master degree of science and management. Um, there's RHU, Registered Health Underwriter, REBC, Registered Employee Benefit Consultant, CHCC, Certified in Healthcare Consumerism. So I don't know if I missed any other one. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that's enough. Yeah. And then, um, like I said, I already introduced you as my guest and said your name, but if you want to repeat it for the people that have just came on here with us. Absolutely. I'm Latoya Dwight, and I am the founder of the Fibroid Pandemic, and I basically started my platform to provide resources to women and their families um, who are experiencing uterine fibroids. And I say families because oftentimes, you know, families have what I like to call their like secondary suffering, like secondary smoke. You know, yeah. um, if you smoke in a house with someone else, they are going to be impacted, whether directly or indirectly. The same thing with uterine fibroids. If you live in a house or you have a close relationship with a woman who has fibroids, you, you two are going to be impacted directly or indirectly. So women in their families who experience uterine fibroids. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. And you want to repeat the title of what we're talking about today? Sure. So today we're talking about natural options in support in order to help heal through uterine fibroids, but also the importance of discussing and having open dialect about uterine fibroids, because oftentimes women suffer in silence and we want to help prevent the suffering in silence. And my phone keeps going dark. I don't know why, but that's okay. <laughs> we can see you. We can see you fine. It's not giving okay. us any issues. So. Perfect. 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 Okay. Yeah. So, so with that, to start that open dialogue, I started my period yesterday. And so I am in that wonderful portion of my first two 48 hours, my first two days, which means that I have heavy bleeding based, <laughs> based on my fibroids. And I was just thinking too, like, I mean, honestly, that's where we need to start the discussion because mm -hmm. I think the first thing that we need to realize is that your life is different and you need to make the adjustments for that. Oh, absolutely. So can I be <laughs> honest for a second here? Yes. My period started last night. <laughs> <laughs> so this was, this was providential because we, we're supposed to be talking about natural support and the universe was like, oh, for real? We're going to make so sure your hormones is support. right so at so a... Let's see we, what you're really willing to talk about support <laughs> then, right? Exactly. You're on, I'm bloated. No. <laughs> exactly 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 so yeah I mean like one of those things that just is is just right off the bat you got to understand like you're we want things to go back to normal but mm -hmm. it's just not the way that it is like so for me I had to switch over to just using uh reusable pads mm -hmm. and um period panties and uh -huh. I gotta sit on a towel like yep. that's what I just gotta do and I gotta take two showers wow like during, during that time. That's just the yeah. adjustment that I have to, to make. And so I can't, I can't get upset about what's happening in my life. I have to mm -hmm. accept it and right. explain it. If I, if I was at work, I would have to make whatever adjustments I need to, to come home, take my second shower and then go about my day. Mm -hmm. So for me, mine's a little bit different. Um, so with my experience with uterine fibroids, I have had, um, well, with the fibroids, because I was told you're not supposed to own them. My experience with uterine fibroids has been a little bit different in that I have gone through um, what's called uterine, uterine fiber embolization. I had that procedure done in April of 2019. And so with that being said, my it's not surgery. So everyone who's like anti-surgery is not surgery. It is a procedure. You're in and right. out of the office within four to six hours or whatever. Um, but that procedure has helped me tremendously. But I also take more of a holistic approach and that I do incorporate, you know, organic and fresh, you know, fruits, veggies. Um, yep. I know there are a lot of people out there who are vegans. I am no longer a vegan, but, you know, for my own very reasons. But right. I do incorporate a lot of vegan, you know, dishes and things of that nature. Yep. A lot of organic, you know, dishes as well. So I said that to say that my, my menstruals are not as heavy as they used to be. So like you, my menstruals are extremely heavy the first two days, um, but not to a point to where I'm having accidents any longer. So I can probably change my, my pad. Maybe actually when I say extremely heavy, I can probably change my pad about twice a day. Whereas I used to maybe, yeah, tw two or three times a day for the first two days. But 
I used to change about six or seven times a day. And right. that included doubling up with a tampon and a pad. But now right. I use more of a natural, organic, um, toxic-free sanitary napkin called Cherish. And when I tell you that has been a game changer for me, initially when I first started using it, Tashina, to be honest, I was really nervous at first because it wasn't, it's, it's very thin. So you are right. like, what the heck is this mess going to help out? But right. it works tremendously for me. Right. Um, and especially because it is toxic free, I'm right. such a huge supporter of it because it does help minimize um, a lot of the side effects that I used to experience with my, um, with my menstrual cycle every single month anyway. So let's dial it back to, to the bigger, the bigger yes. topic, right? Mm -hmm. So, so we know that the key to starting to get relief and mm -hmm. to starting to at the very least, stop things or even possibly turn them around is mm -hmm. your estrogen levels, right? Yes. And so yes. you hit on one of the main things. And to me, one of the most important things and where you should start because mm -hmm. we don't want to add on to it. And that's toxic free living, right? Yes. And so some of the things that have, that have happened to us is because we don't realize that there's so many hormone disrupting chemicals out there and fertilizers and pesticides and plastics, plastics and, and... and all this other stuff. And so if we can prevent it in our makeup and our body care and our, our skin cook, care, our cookware, cookware. <laughs> the, the, the bottles, the, the, the water bottles that we use. And yeah, I, I, I do have plastic water bottles, but I think the main key is like you said, trying to eliminate those items and you got to start yep. from somewhere right exactly you got to start exactly. from somewhere so i mean like i mean even talking about you know like you said our personal care items our our makeup you know i just found this girl i use her lipstick and i'm actually transitioning all of my makeup as well um she has a very great line it's black owned um and I, I love it. it's called Duchess Cosmetics. It works. I can actually wear my mask. One day I was right. out and about with a friend and um, I took my mask. They're like, oh, my God, you got lipstick on? <laughs> like, yeah, it, it doesn't come off. <laughs> nice, so, nice, nice, nice. Yeah, but yeah, really incorporating, you know, like you said, minimizing or eliminating toxic chemicals is so, so critical. Um, but not only that, but for overall health as well right oh yes so yes 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 we're talking about it could definitely apply to people with any not even any type of medical condition but if you're just trying to live a healthier lifestyle period for sure because for me um when i started my you know as, as a holistic wellness coach that's now certified in nutrition and mindfulness and mm -hmm. life coaching and all these things I was looking specifically for support with my gut issues and my <laughs> hormone issues. That's what I was looking for mm -hmm. because everyone told me I was going to have to live with eczema and asthma and allergies for my whole entire life. Mm -hmm. But when I started becoming toxic free, then some of those other things I wasn't even looking for yep. cleared up. Yep. So you're right. Like just taking the toxins out, period, is mm -hmm. going to be for for any of the men that made a mistake and hopped on here. If they're still here, <laughs> that's going to be a good thing for you, too. <laughs> right. And it's so true. Get into your eczema because I, too, have eczema. And I can tell when I'm not eating right or if I expose yep. some type of, you know, foreign element to my body, my eczema does have a reaction. Literally just yep. the other day, I told my husband, I'm like, oh, wow, my eczema is starting to really act up again, flare up. He yep. goes, what happened? I was like, mm, maybe it was the candy I had or maybe yep. it was that new shirt I put on. <laughs> you know, it could yep. be almost anything. It could be Absolutely. almost anything. Because there's chemicals in just about everything. Absolutely. We, we expose and everything we touch and everything, you know, we come into contact with. Absolutely. So, yeah, so for anyone out there that's taking notes, if you haven't thought about this, you have to have a plan and it's a process like we talked about it's going to mm -hmm. take like two years but you mm -hmm. have to have a plan to slowly mm -hmm. start eliminating toxins out yes. of your life like that's going to be so important Absolutely. but with with that let's move over into the diet portion and like you said um there's different ideas there's different research there's different things that people do but i know that we can agree for sure uh -huh. what are some of the things that we should minimize and eliminate if we're having hormone issues, what are some of the things that without a doubt we should start eliminating? Number one, and, and again, everyone, I want to make sure I preface this with saying there's not a one size fits all, right? And I just recently encountered someone who says, you know, eliminating certain foods from your diet was BS. 
that's her prerogative and that's fine. But for me, number one, I would say to eliminate dairy products at all costs. Um, dairy products for several different reasons, but they are very, very high, um, highly estrogenic. Um, and getting to like the cow's milk, the, the pus and bacteria, feces, all of that. But also um, red meat is another item. Red meat is very critical. Again, very highly estrogenic. Um, so I have not eaten... I feel like I have to sneeze. <laughs> I have not eaten red meat since 1997. And I have not eaten pork since I was 16. So that was like two years ago, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, I haven't eaten pork since I was 16, but definitely eliminating red meat. But also sugar. Sugar exactly. is very, 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 very critical. Um, and I keep feeling like, feeling like I have to sneeze. <laughs> there's nothing worse than feeling like you have to sneeze yeah 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 so i'll just continue for a little bit yeah well i mean even this person who did high processed foods right like she's she's got to agree that she can't eat mcdonald's right, right. like she does understand that right, right? hopefully right, right. I hope but so. but but yeah like you said sugar so interestingly enough i had went on a trip with a group of friends and we were in new york and we were eating like we had all these plans to eat at all these restaurants we was going to get barbecue uh -huh. we went to a chocolate place and the day i arrived oh, my friend came and so i ended up going to like a wings place and i got a vegan veggie bowl and i went to the chocolate place and i didn't buy anything and one of my boys is like you pick this place but i'm like i have to do what my body needs me to do like either i'm going to be able to walk around and function or i'm going to put poison in my body and then i'm not even going to be able to do anything nope. so you're going to be I, in the bed for the next two three days exactly <laughs> so i would 100 percent agree sugar definitely you need to minimize that and sugar's um, in like everything right you know um I don't really drink coffee, but if you do like a coffee creamer or yeah. in, in like a, a bread or any type of juice, um, even in like if you buy like your nut milk at, at the store, sugar is in nut milk. It's, it's, in, it's in pasta sauce. It's, it's, in, yep. it's in everything. It's in yep. everything. Yep. Absolutely. So what are some of the things that you definitely should include? Again, not not necessarily saying because there is no I agree, there's no one size fits all mm -hmm. diet. Mm -hmm. But what are some of the th foods that are going to be helpful to your body? Oh, wow. Um, anything that's not fried. No. <laughs> <laughs> right. um, but yeah, eliminating fried foods at all costs. You know, you'll be amazed at what your air, I don't use the air fryer, but I hear my, my friend said, and I have to kind of start using it, but you'll be amazed at what baking, sauteing, broiling can really do. Um, just expound yep. your thought process and your horizons right. quite a bit, and you will be very pleased, but yep. also incorporating natural organic fruits and veggies. Now, if right. you're unable to get, you know, organic, just try to get as fresh as possible. If you can't right. get fresh, try to get frozen. If you can't get frozen, then consider going to the can. I personally don't like canned foods. Um, right. But as, as often as possible, get organic, fresh fruits and veggies. So I believe in having like a high diet. And um, a lot of citrus foods are very good. If you have uterine fibroids, they're very effective. But also, believe it or not, celery juice is amazing. I don't mean by the taste, but it's amazing as to what it does with your body. I mean, it's very detoxifying. It really helps with the bloating. I mean, it, is, it helps with your hair, skin, and nails. It helps as far as, um, I mean, it does so many wonderful things. So that, those would be some of the main key items, I would say, to start implementing into your daily um, eating regimen. Yeah, definitely. Lots of greens. Mm -hmm. I pretty much like I will have either um, egg white and spinach and kale or I will have um, just a vegan omelet with all of that in it. I pretty much mm -hmm. have some greens with every single mm -hmm. meal. Right. And then right, right. Um, from my functional doctor, they, they were looking at what my diet was and they encouraged me to eat more fresh fruit. 
Mm-hmm. So definitely mm-hmm. those are some must have in your diet. I, I do yes. have the benefit again, as a holistic wellness coach, I actually have a couple of scans that I can have people do mm-hmm. that will tell them the foods that they need to be eating mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. some of the supplements and vitamins and things of that nature. So right. um, interestingly enough, I'm not supposed to have celery. <laughs> really? So, but I think that's, you yeah. Me that. Yeah. But that's, that's just on. That. Yeah, but that's just on my scan. But that and that's why and that's again why, you know, if if you're you want to do as much as you can on your own, but at times you need to consult an expert, right? Exactly. And so if there's something that's not working for you, again, I just have at my disposal a very uh, uh, inexpensive scan that I can do that tells you the best foods for you to eat. Uh-huh. And then I have a, a DNA one that's like $300 to do if you were having some major issues and need some, some other things. But like you said, it's always an individual ap- approach, but there's definitely some very, very clear guidelines of what to avoid mm-hmm. and what things are going to be supportive for and just about everyone. Yeah, and it, the thing is, is that another key is just remaining consistent. You know, I'm Absolutely. sure you probably get a ton of DMs. I get a ton of DMs saying, hey, listen, I want to have a baby or my, my fibroids have grown tremendously. What can I do? Well, number one, it's so great to try to educate yourself and understand, learn what works for your body. Because again, there's not a one size fits all, but yep. it requires consistency. It's not going to happen over, overnight. Even if you decide to have a procedure or a surgery, which I don't promote either one. What I do promote is education. Educate right. yourself and land on, this, on a decision that you feel is in your best interest, regardless of, regardless of what it is. But it's so critical that you remain consistent because a lot of doctors are issuing these hysterectomies like they're placebos. I mean, like they're right. just candy. And the thing is with women, they have this false narrative or this false hope that when they have this um, hysterectomy, their fibroids will never grow back. And that's not true. That's right. far from the truth. And that's right. a main element that women are missing. You know, right. um, I had a discussion with someone recently and she said, yeah, that actually happened to me. Her doctor did not tell her. So before care, but even more so after care and remaining consistent is so very critical. Absolutely. Absolutely. And again, like you mentioned, Unfortunately for us, we didn't know how the toxins were affecting us. We didn't know all this stuff was was happening in the background, but it really did take years to get where we are. Mm -hmm. It didn't just pop up out of nowhere. And so it's really important to understand that it's going to take time to heal. The way that plants work, if you had something else going on, if you were trying to lose weight, you wouldn't eat one piece of broccoli and think you're going to be good. Right. (laughs) So you're going to have to do this new diet for a while. You're going to have to, you know, it's, it's, it's going to be a process for you and you have to understand that you have to, you have to be okay with that. And understand when, when I want people to understand that when you say diet, it's not like going on these binges and these crashes. Right, 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 right. It's more so making, creating a brand new eating regimen as a whole, making it part of your day to day lifestyle which is so critical. And that's what people think, like you said, they're going to do a one time, one time situation or change it for right. a week. And it, it doesn't happen like that. You know, you have to be realistic, you know, it's right, right, it right. time for your body to develop these fibroids. It's going to take t- more time, if not longer in order for your body to expel them and or shrink them or whatever, or at least get to a point to where you, you're able to maintain. Absolutely. Absolutely. And then um, as we're talking, continuing to talk about diet, what are some of those key things that we're looking for? Like I know, for example, in, in the research that I've done, like vitamin D is, is very helpful. I'll Antioxidants. Say that. Uh-huh. So what are some of the other things that or what or expound for for the audience why vitamin D is so important and like where they can get natural forms of I mean, things for like me, that? From? I love vitamin D because, um, well, for one, I love getting natural vitamin D. I try not to take as many supplements as much as possible. Um, I go outside, (laughs) you know, and the thing is, is that what people don't realize is there's actually an app. You can actually download an app and I'm trying to figure out what what the app is here. Well, you live down South though. I live in Michigan, so I do go outside. I do go outside every day, but I've been tested and I'm still low in vitamin D. So I have to supplement. Right, right, right. I'm trying to, I was trying to but yeah, but I forget the name of the app, but basically with the app, it can tell you to your point, contingent upon where you are in the country or on the globe, 
it will tell you the time of day in which the sun rays is giving off the most amount of vitamin yes. D. I mean, vitamin D. Yep. So vitamin D is a great for your bones. It's an immune, an immune booster, which obviously with uterine fibroids, you definitely want to try to build your immunity as much as possible because as your body creates more inflammation and more bloating, more mucus that lowers your, um, your immune system. So vitamin D is very, very critical. And yeah, there are definitely different supplements you can do, which are fine. But the main thing is that I tell people when it comes to supplements, rather than paying attention to what they do contain, try to find out, I mean, what they, what they do for you, try to find out all the extra added elements, all the Absolutely. Added ingredients, which nine times out of 10, they're not going to be listed on the actual packaging. So you got to again yeah. do your research, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, uh, most, if you're, do not buy Walmart vitamins, do not buy, like most of those have sawdust and fillers in them. And yeah, What's when, into, yeah, sawdust, yeah, yeah. when implemented correctly and if necessary, food is medicine. Yes. Let yes. food be that medicine first, like yes. first and foremost, again, Absolutely. as a holistic wellness coach, where I start with people is what's in your diet. And even, even when I run a scan for somebody and it tells me a supplement and uh -huh. it, it'll, it'll say, you need to take a mega dies. I'll say, how much seafood are you eating? Are you right. eating tree nuts every day? Right. I'm not right. going to make you buy a supplement if you ain't even eating the right food first. The supplement not, suggestion first tells me what your diet is doing first right. and foremost. Food Absolutely. is always medicine first. Now let me ask a question. Now when you're doing when you're when you do your scans, when you make these recommendations to people, are they receptive towards it or do you get someone, anyone who ever who are ever like, you know what, I'm not doing it, forget it, just no thank you? <laughs> Well, the individuals who are receptive, most of the time they are receptive to it mm -hmm. because they're looking for the solutions. The ones that aren't receptive just won't come back. Right. <laughs> that's, what, right. that's what they'll do, right? Right. That's how I know they're not receptive because they won't, they won't do their follow-ups. they'll end up having some type of crazy surgery and mm -hmm. probably still have the same issues years later. Yep. <laughs> Yep, yep, yep. Some <laughs> other things, um, like, so I've heard green tea is good to drink on a regular basis. You know what's funny, Tashina, because, okay, I love tea, right? I'm yeah. a self-proclaimed tea connoisseur, hence the fibroid pandemic teacup. <laughs> got it, got it, got it. I, I am a self-proclaimed loose tea connoisseur. I love tea. Um, a young lady I was told months ago, she was telling me that green tea is not good. Well, I love green tea. Green, from what I understand, I mean, mm -hmm. ancient, Asian. Oh, I thought I heard something. My husband just came in the house. Like, I, I know I'm not freaking out. Like, I'm right, the right, only right. person in this house. Like, okay, keep this live on. You better watch this. It's about to happen. <laughs> but, um, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's part of the ancient Asian you know, food element, you know, food right, right, right. chain, this, this green tea. I mean, it's literally been around for thousands of years. Right. Right. So I personally, I love green tea. Um, green tea does a body good antioxidants, et cetera, et cetera. But I mean, there's other things like, um, so obviously, can you hear that? <laughs> I can't, I can't. I'm oh, real? okay. He must've hit the horn. In the, in the garage, sorry. But um, implementing other items, you know, into your daily lifestyle as far as exercising, you know, if you're able to physically walk, walk as much as possible. If you can jog, yep. jog as often as possible. If you can run, sprint your ass as much as possible. And, right. You know, you don't have to get out there for two, three hours. Start yep. small, start at 20 minutes, half hour to an hour, whatever your body can stand. You know, the thing is you don't want to push your body too, too, too much because what's going to happen is your recovery time is going to be so painful that it's more than likely going to, you know, shy you away from wanting to continue. Um, yep. Yoga, Qigong, Tai Chi, those are also awesome because they help you minimize and lower your, um, your stress levels, your blood pressure. There's a huge um, correlation between high blood pressure and uterine yep. fibroids. So, by yeah. implementing qigong that is i mean those breathing techniques it's kind of funny at first when i started doing it i'm like i look so silly <laughs> like really serious like <sighs> yeah <laughs> but it works um i yep. laughed at myself when i started doing yoga class you know I, I could not freaking twist my body like what i literally when i did my very first yoga class to sheena 
I laughed at myself and, and I was so great. I was so happy that the trainer was so gracious because I literally yep. laughed at myself. So I was like, what the hell? How do you guys do this? But those are very, very instrumental in helping because again, like a lot of different conditions, you have to take yep. a holistic approach, not just absolutely changing one thing in your life. Like we talked about the chemicals, but you know, absolutely. what you bring into your mental space too is so critical. Yep. Yep. And, and like you said, so um, obesity and high blood pressure is going to increase that. And so your, your symptoms and your incidence of uterine fibroids. And so exercising is going to help with both of those elements as mm -hmm. well, as well as reduce inflammation in your body. So yeah, mm -hmm. when, when we have favorable weather here and there's not snow on the ground, I do walk 30 minutes every day, no matter That's what. I, I, I wake up and I do 20 to 30 minutes of dance cardio. I do stretching before uh -huh. I get out of bed. I actually record my affirmations. And so I listen to them and I stretch in my I bed. Love it. Um, for 15 minutes while doing my affirmations and I do 20 to 30 minutes of dance cardio. And then again, when the weather's favorable, I do mm -hmm. 30 minutes of walking uh -huh. without fail at 4 PM when the sun is the highest here in uh -huh. Michigan to uh -huh. get as much sunlight as possible. Right. And that's, that, that should just be normal regimen. And as we keep saying, yes, this is going to help with uterine fibroids, but this is really what everyone should be it doing for overall general health. Overall <laughs> general health. Yeah. And the thing is, what I want to make sure that we mention, I, I'm happy that you that you talked about your cardio because that's critical. That's very critical because with uterine fibroids, the lower your BMI, the better. I mean, yes. obviously with overall general health anyway, right? But yep. it's so funny because I could not for the life of me understand why African-American women were impacted more drastically than our white counterparts, three times more likely to have uterine fibroids than our white counterparts. Well, it's because of our BMI. Well, that's one of the several reasons why. Yep. But our BMI is, is people, please don't judge me. I don't want you coming after the fibroid pandemic saying that I hate my, my race because I don't. But it is, I mean, science doesn't lie, right? Numbers don't lie. Statistics right. don't lie. The thing is, is that typically... African American women are more likely to have a higher BMI than our white counterparts. So because of that, you know, with the estrogen and fat, that helps feed the fat, the fibroid. So yep. to your point, you know, getting cardio in is very, very critical. Yep. And, you know, yep, before yep. and or after you have any type of procedure, if you're going a holistic route, it's so important to be consistent with it. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so um, when we talk about dealing with some of the symptoms, too, because, again, this is a process, uh -huh. we mentioned the mindful movement that's going to definitely help with reducing your stress and your love and your um, give you relaxation so that mm -hmm. yoga, Tai Chi, all that, all the breathing work, breath work, all that stuff that's going to help as well. Uh -huh. um, and then one of the other things that a lot of people get success is different types of body work, right? Uh -huh. So like massage therapy, mm -hmm. acupuncture, mm -hmm. different types of body work. I know for me, I usually try to schedule a massage right mm -hmm. after, mm -hmm. <laughs> right after my period so that I can, and the type of massage that I schedule is called a flex massage. Uh -huh. And so it's, it's really designed to like, get some muscle release out mm -hmm. and get mm -hmm. some of that inflammation out. What mm -hmm. other things have you found or what, are, what things do you practice? In you know, order it's to funny for me, I've done lymphatic massages quite a bit. Um, yep. Lymphatic massages are very, very good. When, when, when you're sick, you can feel your lymph nodes when they kind of swell yep. up quite a bit. Um, yep. It can be under any type of condition, but oftentimes if your immune system's kind of compromise a little bit, if you get sick, like a cold or, flu or whatever, you'll feel your lymph nodes kind of swelling up. So having a lymphatic massage, that helps as far as keeping a lot of the toxins down as well. Absolutely. Um, now, I love lymphatic massages. They are not quite deep tissue. Um, she And the lady who I go to, obviously, I haven't gone to her in over a year because of COVID, but she's really good at pinpointing. And she's like, you're stressed out. You know, so she kind of mm -hmm. gives me all in one, you know, but having that lymphatic massage done, it helps your body to continue to eliminate all those toxins. And yeah. again, you hear people say, well, eating organic is expensive or exercising, getting a personal trainer, going to the, to the gym is expensive or having a surgery done or buying insurance is expensive. Imagine if you didn't have any insurance, 
right? right? Imagine what your body's going to continue doing if you don't do anything, if you don't exercise, if you don't eat well, you are going to continue allowing your body to, I mean, to deteriorate. Right. And the thing is, you can think about getting healthy all you want, but if you're right. not doing, taking the necessary steps that are needed in order to help your body heal, regardless of whatever it is, you're going to find yourself in the same exact situation. So right. I hear people say, well, yeah, you say, go get massage. I can't afford it. That's fine. Do it yourself. Google, right, right, Google right, right, it. Right. YouTube it. There's a lot right. of things you could do at home in the comfort of your own home, you know? Yep. Um, absolutely. And join focus groups, you know, not only, I mean, there's so many things out there. You and I, you know, we, our exactly. platforms are made to help educate people to give them yep. the tools they need so they can move on and make it their decision in their life that they, that they feel is in their best interest. Take advantage of all this free stuff, because I'm going to tell you to Sheena, when you and I started, none of this was out here. <laughs> right, right, none right, right. Information was out here. None. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I mean, if you have a, if you're having some neck tension, I have a free video that talks about migraines and headaches and I teach mm -hmm. you all of the different pressure points to do mm -hmm. in order to naturally get rid of it. So yeah, I have over 800 videos of free information on my YouTube oh, channel. Wow. <laughs> so. I know what I'll be doing this weekend. <laughs> yeah. You got to upload your stuff. You got to upload your stuff. Right. That's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Thank you for that, by the way. Yep. 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 <laughs> All right. So, and then one of the other major things is, is stress reduction, right? So. <laughs> when I tell you that is so important and it's almost like you can feel your, like, okay. So for me, before I started doing um, Qigong and yoga, I never realized I walk around like this a lot. Mm -hmm. I never realized it. I would always be like, I mean, but that's just how I used to walk around all day, every day. And until I started doing it, and I would find myself telling myself, release, release, right. because I held a lot of tension here. But yep. holding my tension here, it ultimately went to my womb, right? Right. So, you know, those toxins, but let's talk about more so, and I'm going to talk about the part from, you know, regarding like toxic relationships, because toxins aren't only the chemicals that we expose to our bodies. Absolutely. Toxic relationships can kill you. If you ever heard of a person dying from a heartbreak, that is true. That does exist. But I mean, the stress that it causes, it, it tears down your body. So it tears down to the bone, people. You know, people don't realize that, you know. So I always say, do, do a, do a um, inventory on your life, right? Right, right, if right, you're right. Three right. to five closest people in your, in your circle are causing any type of angst. And you know, like, think of it like this. When your phone rings and you see that name, how does that make you feel? What's your first thought when that person calls you? Are you excited? Are you like, gosh, I don't feel like talking. Is it going to be, okay, what does he or she want now? Is it going to be something else? You know, those are the small little things to be on the lookout for that you may not realize is contributing to stress, you know, stressors, adding stress to your life. Yes, that's so, so, so true. Mm -hmm. um, any other alternative therapies that you use for stress relief? Oh, gosh. Um, what else do I do for stress relief? Um, I sleep. <laughs> yeah. Getting enough sleep is the most important part for <laughs> sure. I am a sleepaholic. Like, I will get... So my husband, when he and I first met, he's like, I don't, you sleep so much. I said, listen, dude, this is just... So I had to take it back. When I was a young girl, remember having like the sleepovers and your girlfriends come over, you go to bed. My yeah. friends will leave and go home at 10 o'clock at night because I'd fall asleep on them. We'd be at my house having a slumber party and I'd fall asleep. Like that's right. how I, my body, I have this internal clock that it will shut down and there's absolutely nothing I can do about it. And yeah. I used to come to them like, you know what? Sorry. There's been times where I've actually, even as an adult, would be at someone's house like, um, I'll be right back and I'll just go and lay down in the room, go to sleep. Sorry. Right, right, right. But I believe getting um, a lot of sleep is such a huge stress reliever. People it don't is. realize that. But also watching what you what you intake mentally, right? So social media, the news, you yep. know, conversations, you may not realize that they, they can be held in your subconscious state for years. So right. be very choosy about what you allow into your mind space as well. 
Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I definitely, but I don't, I don't watch any news. If it's that bad out there, somebody else is going to tell me. So I don't. Right, know. right. I do. <laughs> when it gets um, bad, everybody talk about it. <laughs> yeah, I, I just recently started getting back on watching the news a bit because I, I didn't for a long time, but I wanted to know what was going on, especially right. with the recent election. I wanted to kind of keep my ear to the street. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, that makes sense. Everybody <laughs> needs to be informed for sure. Right. Uh, obviously, for me as a holistic wellness coach, I try to incorporate all the alternative therapies that I can. So uh -huh. a little bit of music therapy. I was actually had a group of people who like we did a drawing session together. I had not did any drawing in a long time. So mm -hmm. like I was just researching how important art therapy is and mm -hmm. what it was I actually did a live on that. Because um, mm -hmm. I was actually, when we initially said we were going to do it, I was like scared to do it. And I was like, wait a minute, when you were younger, you used to draw. And it's not about what it, right. it's not about what it looks like. It's about, exactly. you know, experiencing it. And um, like we already talked about the deep breathing, mm -hmm. um, aromatherapy, very now good for stress relief. Really. Like the essential oils, aromatherapy, when I tell you that can put you in a whole different element, a whole yes. different mind space. Yes. People, you will be amazed at how your body receptors, your mind receptors respond to essential oils. I mean, lavender, lavender, real lavender doesn't smell like lavender that we get from the store. OK, so right. I don't mean to burst your bubble, guys, but the stuff they're feeding us <laughs> is right. nothing, nothing like the real deal. Essential oils are I mean, I, I have this one um, company that my one of my girlfriends that gave us like a. Um, a housewarming gift and I have this um diffuser I think it's over there but um I use it every I don't use it as often any, anymore because I, I had an allergic reaction to something in the house I was like okay wait let's right, try to right, right. what's going on I didn't know if it had like too much dust in my thing anyway but it's amazing but you can put it behind your ears you can actually put it in your you know all your um what are they called here your, your pressure points yes so when I started preparing for my procedure I had to get my blood pressure down. I didn't have high mm -hmm. blood pressure. It was slightly elevated, but they wouldn't yep. touch me until I got that regulated. So I would do yoga. Mm -hmm. In yoga class, I had my little bottle of lavender essential oil, and mm -hmm. I would literally sit here as I'm stretching. I go you like this, and I go like that. I kept my essential oil, and it sounded weird, but I would be at work, and I'd just sit there like this. Yep, yep, yep. yep. Like, what are you doing? I'm like, oh, nothing. I'm trying to stay calm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's there was a blend that actually was called stress away that I needed. I was in a real high stress job. I was mm -hmm. working like sixty to eighty hours as emergency response team wow. for um General Motors in the automotive industry. And yeah, mm -hmm. I would just the same thing. I would just take my little blend and I would just be like, I gotta have my moment you right here to, to de stress. And then <laughs> I, I there's also a, some essential oils that help balance out your hormones as well, too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and and can help with like if you use a heating pack and can yes. get a little bit of uh, pain relief by using castor oil and a heating pack with the, mm -hmm. that so now I've heard of the castor oil packs I hear great things about it I've never done it um, I have been told that it's not good to do on your menstrual cycle because it can make right. you bleed heavier I've right, never right, right. done it before though but I've heard nothing but great things about it yep absolutely absolutely now, do you do castor oil packs? Mm hmm Yep. Really? Yeah. So how does yeah. it work? How does it work? Well, I, I actually usually, so I do heat with it as well. Mm -hmm. And there's, so there's just heating packs that you can, and then you can, again, I usually use different essential oils that are either going to balance the hormones and then mm -hmm. heat with it. So mm -hmm. it definitely helps when probably like a little bit after or before when you start to have a little bit of that back pain uh -huh. or some pain in the front, uh -huh. as well as just different types of herbs as well so right well i love yep. it i love it yep. you know i'm such a huge proponent for again i like natural support i like the natural approach the more homeopathic holistic route um but again i like to incorporate everything in it so it's not Absolutely. just again not a one-size-fits-all people i definitely recommend finding out what works best for your body but once Absolutely. you find out it's okay to stick just stick with that it's okay right yeah like I, I my, my smoothie, I have my go-to yes. smoothie is mangoes, 
banana. Sometimes I'll do a plantain instead of bananas, depending upon what I got going on. Mangoes, bananas, blueberries, and Swiss chard. Or I might sub it out for spinach. I recently heard that spinach is not good for you. We're not supposed to be consuming spinach, but I know how my body feels when I eat it. So I'm okay. Exactly. With that. <laughs> exactly. And again, if you have any doubts, go see a specialist. Yeah. You know, just like you can, even though you may have to pay $200, like the, your doctor can give you a DNA test and can tell you what you mm -hmm. should eat and what you should not eat. And yeah. so I'm, a proponent of going to a specialist and, mm -hmm. and yes, there's a comment that, um, that Olivia is stating that her, her gynecologist said the castor oil packs won't work. And, and some, some of the doctors just aren't educated on certain things. Number one. Uh -huh. And number two, you, you may have to go to a different specialist. Cause if I wanted recommendations on food and mm -hmm. natural things that I wanted, I had to go to a functional doctor to get that. Uh -huh. Like I had to go to someone who was specializing in that. So again, go to an expert, go to a specialist. Like I said, anyone can, can meet with me for an hour and mm -hmm. we can chat about what options are. And then I can let you know how much it is to do a scan if you need some guidance right. on your food. Right. So just consult someone and get all the information and then individualize for what your body needs. Right. Well, it's pretty cool. You know, I heard you say, well, Olivia, I don't see any comments at all. You see the comments? Yeah, the comments are at the bottom of my screen. That's interesting. I don't see anything. Which is cool. I mean, <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I mean, that's so critical. And I mean, you know, the information that you have to share is amazing. I love exactly what you're doing. I love how you advocate for women. But more so, like myself, you educate, educate women so that they can continue to advocate for themselves. And that's critical. Absolutely. Absolutely. They tell Absolutely. people, you know, when you come question ready, when you come after already doing your research, your conversation is typically going to be a lot more thorough with your doctor versus someone who just shows up and is like, I don't know what's going on, you know, and has no questions, hasn't yep. looked into anything. Again, you have to advocate for yourself because yep. no one's going to have your back for your womb as much as you would, right? right? Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Anything else you wanted to add on? Anything you think we missed when it comes to no, I think this was great. I mean, you know, again, as a recap, incorporating fruits and veggies and eliminating red meats, eliminating dairy, eliminating sugar as much as possible. Um, just really focusing on the external toxins, whether it's within your relationship, the chemicals, you know, BPA, cookware, paraben, yep. um, even to our health and beauty products. At the end of the day, again, we cannot stress enough how important it is to just advocate for yourself and do your research. Because again, we only get one womb. Yes. As far as I know, I don't think they're doing womb <laughs> transplants yet. Right. No. At least I haven't found that out. Right. But we only right. get one. So make the best of it. Make the best of it. Absolutely. And how can everyone get in touch with you? Sure. So you can find me on Instagram under the fibroid pandemic. You can also find me on Facebook. I have a personal private, I'm sorry, a private Facebook group called The Fibroid Pandemic. There's actually two on Facebook. They're both me. I managed the one with, that has my logo, the face on it. And then you can also go to the fibroidpandemic.com or you can click the link in my bio here on Instagram. You can, you know, um, get in touch with us, um, whether it's just, sign up for my email list. Um, I'm also doing a virtual vision board party this Sunday. So you can click the link in my bio there to join. Um, I always recommend that you put on, turn on notifications. I know everyone says that, but I'm working on a lot of different projects. They're not finalized yet, so I can't speak on it, but definitely turn on the notification because I have some really cool things in the, um, in the future, future horizon. And then Olivia Bowman Jackson, she had another a uh, question. Oh, um, what? Hi, Olivia. Hi. <laughs> I can't see what, the comments. <laughs> what are your thoughts on yoni scenes? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, <laughs> okay. I don't think I ever quite answered this question in public. I tried to stay away from it for a long time. Um, I personally do not do yoni scenes. I did it one time, one time only. My butt was hot. I, I didn't see, I didn't get any pros or cons from it. You know, um, I didn't, it wasn't, I didn't feel anything great, but it didn't bother me either. 
Um, mm -hmm. I hear a lot of people, a lot of women live by them, and I respect that. Um, I know Yoni steams go back hundreds of years, and again, I respect it. Um, me personally, what I will say is that be very careful and very knowledgeable about knowledgeable about where your um, herbs are being sourced from. Because yes. a lot of people nowadays are doing all these yoni steams and are having, you know, people are having some, you know, really major issues. So yeah. what I will say is just be very cognizant of where your herbs are being sourced from before you start doing all these yoni steams. And, and again, do your research. Personally, yeah. it's not for me. That's fine. I know some people who live by them. I think they're great. I love to see people who are having positive, you know, um, right. results. And that's great. But for me, I personally do not do them. Right. And so I've only recently heard about them. So they're not necessarily something that have been in my, in my radar or something mm -hmm. to use. But as you said, when it comes to vitamins, supplements, essential oils, herbs, when implemented correctly, they can be helpful. And so mm -hmm. the idea of a yoni steam the idea of of herbs that are designed for your hormones mm -hmm. that are able to cleanse you makes sense. Right. But it is very important to make sure that you are with an expert and Absolutely. that you said things are sourced correctly. That's that mm -hmm. is of utmost importance because using a an essential oil that's possibly laced with chemicals or mm -hmm. herbs that came out of somebody's backyard and then was put in some, you don't know where it's put and then it was put somewhere else that could actually do more damage to you than doing nothing. Absolutely. So it's very, very important. Absolutely. And just a quick plug for Olivia. She's actually going to be one of the sponsors for my vision board party. Thank you, Olivia. So I <laughs> want to say that real quick. <laughs> wonderful. Wonderful. <laughs> so I think we touched on everything and I don't see any other comments. So I appreciate we everyone did. for being here Absolutely. and um, I will have the replay available on my YouTube channel. And when you get, get everything figured out, I can probably send you just the MP4 version of it as well. Absolutely. Please definitely tag anybody in this that you think needs to hear this information. Feel free to share it, come back, ask any questions. And we Thank everyone for joining us today. Sheena, it's been a pleasure, dear. Thank you so yes. much. All right. Have you a have great an weekend. Day. Thank you. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.